Hello, my name is Stephen Shaw. Thanks for watching. Today, I'm going to talk about Medicare, and uh, we're going to talk about when to enroll in Medicare, who needs to enroll, how do you enroll, who doesn't need to enroll. So we're going to cover some of the basics. So when somebody calls me, I'll have clients call, and they'll they'll say something like this: Stephen, my birthday's in October, and maybe they're telling me this in April. Um, I'm going to turn 65. What do I need to do? Often the, the first thing I tell them is, well, when you get three months away from the month you turn 65, that's when you need to start the ball rolling by enrolling in Medicare Part A and B. So let's look at that from a, a timetable point of view. If their birthday is in October, you got September, August, or July. So as early as July, they can go to ssa.gov, that's the social security website. They can, once you go to that site, the way it's structured, uh, the last time I looked, is you scroll down just a tab, and there's a bright blue button that says, apply for Medicare benefits only. So that's, that's how simple it is. You just start the process, enter in your information, and that's how you enroll in both A and B. And you could do that as early as July, in my example, so it's three months before the month you turn 65. You could do it the month you turn 65, and you have until three months after the month you turn 65. So there's a total of a seven-month window in which you can enroll in part A and B. But there are some people who do not need to go through that process. If you are turning 65, and you already are receiving a social security benefit or a railroad retirement benefit, um, then you will automatically be enrolled in Medicare Part A and B. Now, how do you know if this happens or not? Well, you'll get a red, white, and blue Medicare card, and you'll get correspondence saying, we have enrolled you, or this is your Medicare claim number, and your effective date for Medicare Part A and B is you know, October 1st or whatever. It's always going to be the first of the month, by the way, no matter what your birthday is. You could be born on the 31st of the month, but whatever date or day of the month that is, the effective date for Medicare is going to be the first of the month. So you can, you may automatically be enrolled if you are already receiving Social Security benefits. They will just automatically enroll you and send you a card. Now, some people get automatically enrolled and they don't want to be part of Part B. Part A, there's really no reason not to be enrolled in because there's no separate premium or cost associated with Part A. So if you're enrolled automatically in Part A, big deal. But if you're enrolled in Part B, but you don't want to be because maybe you have group coverage, then you have to opt out of Part B for you know, a time being while you're covered somewhere else. The process of how to do that is explained in the letter that they send you and on the back of the card, and, and there's a whole little process. It's not, it's not terribly hard, but you just got to pay attention to that kind of stuff. So that's who to enroll is people that have, are turning 65. Now, Medicare benefits, um, as I explained in the last video, are available for some people that are younger than 65 under certain conditions. So we won't go through those conditions, but... Um, but generally speaking, it is for people over 65 and older, and with some exceptions of people like people with disabilities or people that have been diagnosed with end-stage renal disease prior to age 65 can may qualify for Medicare earlier. So um, the cost, like I um, said, or as I've talked about in other videos, is you're going to pay for Part B premium. You may, if you're a higher income earner, you may have to pay an extra Part B premium. It's a higher cost for Part D and Part B. So if you're curious, if you consider yourself a higher income earner, then you may want to tune into the video about IRMA. That stands for Income Related Monthly Adjustment Amount, and that will help you understand what that's all about. But for most people, it's a standard cost. This year, 2021, the cost is $148.50 a month per person, and that's just for Part B. Um, if you sign up for Part D, there may be a premium associated with that. Of course, if you buy a supplement, if you buy an Advantage plan, there may be other premiums associated with those things. 
Um, but that's the standard for Part B. W the consequences of enrolling are you get the benefits from Medicare. The consequences of not enrolling are simply a couple things. The obvious thing is if you don't have, if you're not enrolled in Medicare, then you don't get to benefit from Medicare at all, right? But there's also another consequence, and that is if you don't enroll when you are first eligible, and then later you decide that you want to enroll, you may get a penalty, and that penalty, the way it's written right now in the law, is lifetime. So, for example, the late enrollment penalty for Part B is currently 10% for every 12-month period that you could have had Medicare but didn't have Medicare. So your premium will be increased by 10% for every 12 months. So, and it never goes away. It's not like a penalty that you just pay one time and then you settle up and then now from, from now on it's normal. Uh, the Part D premium penalty is, um, is, is, is a different calculation altogether. It's, they basically say for every month, not year, every month you could have had a drug plan but decided not to have a drug plan, we're gonna charge you 1% above whatever premium the, the baseline premium is. Now, the exception to all of that, anytime we're talking about late enrollment penalties under Part B or Part D, the exception is if you have credible coverage somewhere else, then you can avoid this penalty. So let me explain what that means. If I have group insurance through my employer or through my spouse's employer, and that group insurance is considered credible uh, by the government, that, that means something, it's called credible coverage, then that is acceptable to the government. I, don't, I can carry that for 10, 12 years, it doesn't matter. I can carry it forever. And as long as I have that, the whole time, between the time that I was first eligible for Medicare and the eventual time that I lose my credible coverage and sign up for Medicare, as long as I have credible coverage and can prove that, then I avoid all those penalties. But notice I say that I, I can prove it. So the burden is on you to prove, if you go that route and delay coverage, you have to prove to the government that you had credible coverage. They're not gonna chase that down for you or assume it. You can't just simply say, I had credible coverage. Oh, okay, very good, then we won't charge you these late penalties. No, they're gonna want evidence to show that you had credible coverage. Now, how do you obtain that evidence? Well, you either go through your human resource department or through the employer's resource, human resource department, or you can go to the, the insurance carrier directly. Either way, they should be able to provide credible coverage evidence. But again, it's all a time thing. So if, um, so if I have a client that turned 65 in 2017, and they've continued to work and continued to be under their group plan, and let's say that that happens until 2023. Then they quit and call me up and say, Stephen, I'm leaving my job, I'm retiring finally, and I need to get on Medicare. So how do I do that? Well, I'm gonna still direct them to the Medicare or the Social Security website to enroll, but my caution to them is, okay, uh, we'll call him Bob. Bob, you, you're, you've gotta know that you could have had it when you were 65 and you decided to wait for you know, an extra seven years, you're gonna to have to prove that. So make sure that you get something from the human resource department that has evidence of coverage for all of that time, not just one year, not just for the initial year, but for every year and every month uh, between that, that time span. And if you can do that successfully, then you will avoid all the penalties. But if you can't, then they, uh, Medicare will penalize you. So you want to avoid that. So that w that's uh, today's video. I wanted to keep it a little bit tight, uh, try to keep these videos basic and short. So here's what we covered. What, what is Medicare? We covered in a different video. This video was about how to enroll and when to enroll. Um, and in, in future videos, we'll talk about a few other nuances, such as uh, we'll unpack a little bit more clearly the differences between Medicare Advantage plans and supplement plans, and uh, how to get those and when to get those. Uh, drug plans are a separate conversation altogether. So anyways, there's more to come, but hopefully you found this helpful. Thanks. Bye-bye.
On our channel, we have more than just Medicare videos. We also have a playlist, Strategic Money Tips. They cover other areas that are very practical. We try to keep them very brief. Go to our YouTube channel, subscribe, click on notifications button so that you'll be notified when we put out a new video. But if we could serve you directly, please call our office 1-800-381-8870 and visit us on our website at strategicestateplanning.com.